Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Nikon Triple X. Today I'm going to do a commentary over uh, a recent training day that I had and I think uh, it could be useful for, for you guys uh, <clears throat> out there who's just starting out boxing. I think some of the best ways to, to learn boxing is to show it and <laughs> what better way than to uh, learn as I'm showing it, which is really cool. Um, here I am in uh, Hong Kong Muay Thai gym in Chiang Mai. Uh, they happen to have a very uh, formidable boxing trainer there who had good hands on him when it came to focus mitts and he's had actually several boxing fights so I trained with him. Uh, in Thailand boxing and Muay Thai um, is usually mixed in together so if you want to train just boxing you mostly have to go to a Muay Thai gym and hopefully they have a, a trainer with experience in boxing. Um, that's actually part of the reason why I want to open uh, a boxing gym in Thailand just to promote boxing itself uh, apart from Muay Thai because I believe the skill set is different though they have a lot in common in terms of uh, development, psychology and why not? But boxing does have um, different set of skills in terms of uh, defense, offense, and uh, movement. Because you only have two weapons, uh, which is your left and your right hand in boxing. Um, but in Muay Thai, you have you know elbows, knees, kicks, clinching, hands, and that can change the dynamics of the game quite a lot, uh, especially with the stance the movement, head movement, and defensive uh, maneuvers. So in boxing, for example, you tend to be a lot lower, have a lot wider stance, while in Muay Thai you would be standing up a lot more straight up uh, and not have as dynamic head movement as you would in boxing. So this is um, an important note. So that's why I don't like to transfer back and forth. So if I, let's say, do, do Muay Thai, for a while, I, I tend to stick with just that, because um, going back and forth can result in a tragic accident. And I used to do that when I was younger. I used to like one day train Muay Thai, one day train boxing, especially when I start watching the Mike Tyson videos with those bobbing and weaving um, techniques, and it got me into some trouble because I was actually sparring uh, back in Canada, and I spar and I moved my head out of the right hand. And I smashed my own head into the guy's knee. <laughs> he just brought his knee up, and I smashed myself into it, and I broke my nose. So that was a very hard lesson for me. But basically, you shouldn't mix and match these two sports. So anyway, here I am with the trainer. And uh, he's trying to, of course, uh, refine my skills uh, to make sure I hit um, much more tight and crisp and more snap in the shoulders it's always good to have a good trainer to remind you of these things because you know when you keep training you know in different places and by yourself you tend to uh, focus on different things and some things get overlooked so this guy is teaching me to be light on my feet and snap my shoulders and he's, he was very good at that yeah trying to work on some jabs one twos. I think uh, he's primarily an out, out fighter, so that's why he was focusing on um, long range movements, uh, long range techniques. A lot of jabs, a lot of right hands. One twos again, right here. Very firm. Uh, holds like he would hold it very hard. They could go full power into the hands. It was very, it, it was very satisfying. Not all the trainers can do that. I appreciated that. There's a one right there. And I just trying to try to get in there, good close. Next, guys, I like to get close. And I try to hold on to his right elbow, try to see with my left hand. Try to hold on to his. Uh, left elbow and throw a body shot we we're talking if that's legal or not I'm, I, I'm sure some people can pull it off if you can do it fast but you could but 
he was just against it. And here we're doing a little show, uh, a pivot and a left, uh, a right uppercut to the body. So pivot, right uppercut. You're right now slowly going into the Philly shell kind of thing, going on over there. Left pivot, right uppercut, left hook. Yeah, pivots are very useful in uh, boxing or in fight sports in general because it, it totally throws the a charging opponent off. So if you have an opponent that's charging at you, you pivot out of the way and counter. Um, it's, you know, Mike Tyson or Costamato would have, have their fighters do a lot because you stay in the range, you counter, and the fight keeps going. So it keeps uh, for an exciting fight where areas shuffling backwards or further would actually make the fight less exciting as it would you know break the continuous action uh, I always like to teach fighters or just in general I like to preach that you know you not only have to not get hit and hit the opponent but you also have to do it in an exciting manner so if you just hit the opponent and run away um, it's not that fun as it's as it would be to stay close and not get hit and keep hitting the opponent so that's the general notion that I'm trying to preach and I think you can see it with uh, fighters like Lomachenko or Mike Tyson for example they would stay really close with their opponent and they would counter shots and not very difficult to get hit they would, they would, they would be very difficult to get hit with their head movements and they would lay a lot of shots on their opponents and that was a very exciting bouts that they would have in their career so here, doing again, do a body shot, just a slight step back, or boom, boom, one, two, right there on top. Right hand, right hand. Uh, uh, right uppercut, left hook, and right hand. I wish that the combinations that he did was was a little bit longer than just two punches. I would prefer three to five punches because it's you know you get more of a burn. But two punches are fast. Double jabs. Again, make him more snappy, and I think he wanted. There was one interesting point he made that is that uh, when I when I step in for the jab, uh, I I get a little uh, flat-footed and also my head moves towards the inside of the opponent uh, opponent's range, so I I actually fall right in within their trajectory of fire for the right head, rear hand. So that was interesting that he noted that out because it's either you go all the way to the left or you go to the right when you throw a jab with your head and so you get out of the you know the basic trajectory of the right hand of the opponent so this is what is important when you throw a jab because it, it does leave you open for the left hook and the right hand so you better move your head very good work by the trainer here He's very happy about it so yeah then we started a little bit of touch, light, light, light sparring, just to get the body moving. Uh, I didn't even have my mouth guard actually. My son had uh, managed to find my mouth guard from my table and feed it to the dog. So I didn't have mouth guard that day. Yeah, so just some light movement, get some footwork in, throw some light jabs. It's always good to do sparring because you 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 imagine something. Uh, that's a fine thing about I, I. It fascinates me because you you really imagine yourself moving a certain way, and then until you go in there and try to read your opponent's rhythm and his choice of technique and how he distances you and the play of it, it's like a dialogue, and you really have to read quickly to kind of get a rhythm. 
and, and it's actually really fun. I, I really enjoy sparring. I, I do like to spar hard sometimes when I get the uh, opportunity, but you do have to have the all day gear, like mouth guards, cup, head gear, I'd say, um, to go hard. And But you don't want to do that all the time because it is very damaging on the body. It's basically a fight. But light sparring, on the other hand, is it's something you can do very often. However, you do, you can fall into the habit of pulling back your punches too much, and that could be detrimental into your fight. So here I am trying to do several punches, get in, close the distance, and there was no ring here, so he kept, uh, he was able to run away all the time and not be able to, um, I wasn't able to corner him. Because I like to use the, the ring a lot to bring the fight into the pocket. Especially with outfighters like this guy. Here he was uh, again emphasizing for me to have a very, not only uh, tight guard but a rigid guard. Because I like to have a relatively loose guard. But because I'm, I'm pretty lazy so I like to save energy. But it, it's, it's good to have actually a rigid guard. I see his point. Favorite range is in the inside. He gets out of that. Yeah, I'm always advancing. Yeah, I see that a lot. I gotta, I gotta draw in more because I, I think I, I would, I do better as a counter puncher than. Than an offensive fighter, yeah, I can see. But you gotta find your own style. Right? That that's but that's what it comes down to. You gotta be able to see what style of fighting suits you. Whether you are an out fighter with long arms or long straight techniques, or an in fighter with circular and or counter defensive or offensive, and if you have a lot of power or if you have a lot of speed. You know, uh, are you the kind of person that would rack up points, or are you the kind of person that would be, uh, be able to hunt for knockout punches? You got to be able to determine these things. What I'm saying is that I, I personally, like you know, the, the honest truth, I think I don't have the, uh, is enough to be a knockout kind of person. I think I have a mid-range amount of power, and speed is probably average again, also. But my tendency to read patterns and rhythm and counters I think I have a bit of a knack for that so I think I, I like to develop that um, I tend to get impatient and go forward with it a lot but it's good to you know try different things but as I spar more uh, now I will be investing a lot more time to spar with a lot of different opponents to hopefully develop a different set of skills because moving forward all the time is, is a comfort comfort uh, zone for me and it's not actually my strong area as you can see because I'm usually out of range especially if I'm out of uh, out of a range where I can't uh, corner uh, my opponent so again we're talking about rigid rock the rigid guards here I always want to respect teachers with lots of experience because they they they, they know <laughs> what they teach you comes from lots of lots of um, you know, hard learned lessons. He's, he's teaching a lean back without stepping, so just lean the upper body and returning the answer with the jab or right hand. And where was I? Yeah, I got him with the gazelle punch, as they call it, or the leaping left hook. That was fun. And here I'm trying to say that like my my favorite range is inside because I don't have much of a arm length. Yeah, and he's trying trying to show that what he would do is if an opponent wanted to get into get inside, he would actually push him away with his forearm. And uh, this tends to get back into the outer range with the long hand, right hand or left hook or jab. Yeah, 
So he's trying to create this stance, and I'm saying, well, there's there are several clinches that we could do. And here we go again. I actually wish we really went into the ring. Maybe next time. That training uh, really worked my arms because uh, I, I was going full force in the pads and bag work and then there was a lot of sparring so my upper body was pretty toasted by the end of the day. And also earlier that day I did a crossfit wad with uh, you know, uh, military presses and a lot of upper body shoulder work so I was pretty, pretty worked but thanks to my new diet with snake diet and um, eating eggs and stuff like that I am able to recover fairly quick yeah, so he's teaching again more long range <laughs> yeah <laughs> I still gotta lose a little bit more weight to get that big leap in there there you go you're playing at this point. Again, we couldn't go too hard or too crazy or land real headshots because I didn't have my mouth guard and we didn't want to go 100% or any hard levels, any real impact. I just did a switch guard and landed a shot. That was funny. Yeah, this guy was great. So if you do go to Hong Kong gym, and if you see him there, the dude with all the cats, he's good. My boy, jumping around. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and uh, have a good day. I'm going to update you guys on what's going to happen with my gym. I'm going to start a little tiny community gym in my block to invite people to come train boxing, and we can uh, work out online together. All right. Please subscribe to my channel, Nikon Triple X, that will help me a lot. And until next time.